Hey, I'm Nathan Brandt with Coal Ironworks. Today we're gonna to take a look at our new 25 kilowatt induction forge. So I really wanted to cover some of the things that make this machine stand out. Some of those details are the same between our 15 and our 25, um, and others the 25 alone are able to do. So uh, just kind of an overview of the machine. We've got an induction heater at the top, a uh, chiller, so this is an industrial rated chiller and it has a refrigeration unit in it. So it's monitoring the temperature of the water that's cooling the whole system at all times. Um, you're able to control that if you need to set it up or down based on the dew point of your area uh, to maintain low amounts of sweating or anything like that on the machine. But what that means is as the, uh, the coil is exposed to your hot work, that water is going to heat up and the refrigerant cycle on this will chill the water back down to your set point. Another thing that's really, really cool about our units is they are completely plug and play. So on the back of the unit, we've got our breaker that controls the power to the induction. We have a fully enclosed box, all of the wiring, the exposed terminal on some of the other offerings that's all in the box. And we come pre-wired with an appropriately sized cable and a plug. For the 25 kilowatt especially, you have to have a dedicated 50 amp service to this unit. Because of the power at play here, it's very sensitive to any fluctuations in that. And we actually found even going one wire size smaller, uh, even for this eight foot lead, was enough to affect the performance of the unit. So you gotta be really careful, make sure you've actually got 50 amp service run for the dedicated outlet that this machine will be plugged into, but otherwise it is totally 220 volt single phase. The 15 kilowatt has a smaller cord and needs a 30 amp service to give you full functionality. Both the chiller and the induction heater are wired into the same box so that one power source will provide power for this entire unit. On the front of the machine, this is the same for the 15 or the 25. The chiller has this little placard here. This is gonna allow you to turn the unit on and off, uh, as well as go through a system of manual uh, entry mode that you can change parameters. You can go from Fahrenheit to Celsius. You can change that set point that you want the water temperature at. Up on the unit, uh, this is the same on the 15 or the 25. You've got your on off switch. You've got manual auto mode. If I flip this up to auto mode, now I can press the green button and it will simply follow whatever numerical value I input on these three counters. The first one is your heat time. This little green uh, light will light up when the unit is running that heat time and it will count up to whatever you have set. So in this case, it would heat for 20 seconds, then it would kick over to my retain time heat for an additional 20 seconds, and then the cooling time you can have preset for an automated cycling. I don't normally use that. Most of the time I'm gonna leave the, the machine in manual mode and uh, just have my foot pedal on the floor. And anytime that's depressed, the unit is heating. If I need to control my amperage output, I'll just turn this little knob here so I can turn it all the way down to zero, all the way up to max power. For uh, our 15 kilowatt, that's gonna be around 800 amps output. So this is current output. Uh, and on the 25, that's around 1100 amp output. That's the amperage that's actually going to the coil. If you need to uh, allow that inductin, induction heating to, uh, to kind of radiate into your work, you're heating a larger piece, then you can turn your amperage output down and just let the unit sit and heat a while. Uh, we were doing some samples recently in, in three and a quarter inch rounds, so three, over three inches in diameter, and uh, we had to let the unit cycle for about five minutes, but we didn't ever want it to get like super hot and affect the surface of the metal. So we can just turn that amperage output down and it will still input a considerable amount of heat into your work, but it won't elevate the temperature as much. That's super helpful if you're gonna be doing something like heat treating um, or tempering. You can even turn this unit down to, let's say 200 amp output and get a real nice consistent, you know, uh, gold or blue color to your work. So those are a few uses that we've found that we're using consistently. A couple of the parameters that we're using on the machines and those are gonna be the same, whether you're using a 15 kilowatt or a 25 kilowatt. So when we're talking about coils with an induction forge, I want you to imagine that a around this induction coil is a donut, right? So as the donut diameter expands, there begins to be a hole in the middle. If this was small, that hole is small, but on a, a large coil like this, that hole is gonna be here. 
If I try to heat a small part in a big coil, I'm only going to be barely migrating into that in induction zone, right? So you need to properly size your coil to the work that you're going to be doing. Another thing to note, the number of wraps in your coil is going to cause different heating methods. And in some cases, like in this case, even on a 25 kilowatt, if I do a four wrap, three inch diameter coil, it'll actually air out the machine because there is either too much resistance, there's too much material, something isn't congealing with what the machine is measuring. And so I always recommend maintaining two to three wraps per coil. That seems to be the sweet spot. I do have on some smaller coils, I've done some successful four and five revolutions for really small, but you also kind of have to manage the amount of material that goes into it because again, it can air out the machine. So on a small coil like this, if I put a three quarter inch round bar, I can heat that material super, super fast because I've got a really tight magnetic field to the size stock I'm gonna be heating. And with four coil revolutions, I find this heats up in five seconds. But you have to have the power behind the coil to do that if you're gonna increase the number of revolutions per coil. So that's gonna be some experimentation. Generally, for coil making, we simply use uh, off-the-shelf copper from a local hardware store. We use quarter-inch diameter. And then I simply flare the ends a little bit more than you would normally do for that size uh, connection for the flare nuts. And then we use off the shelf eight millimeter flare nuts, which we uh, import from our supplier. And, and that's been a great way to connect it. I don't have to mess with adapters. I don't have any additional components or you know additional material in the system. So we can uh, really affordably uh, DIY our coils, but we do also make coils and do custom coil configurations uh, if you guys have a design in mind that you don't want to try to tackle yourself. So for more information on that, coaliron.com and uh, you can also email us info at coaliron.com for more information or if you're looking for a custom coil. Thank you so much.